what prompted you to get engaged with Lazan? Tell about Lausanne first, for those that don't know. Oh, yeah. yeah, okay. Lausanne is what it says on the tin. It's a city in, in Switzerland, Lausanne. Um, but in 1974, uh, Billy Graham convened a, a congress there in Lausanne on world evangelization. And so it became known as the Lausanne Congress on World Evangelization. But because John Stott and uh, Billy Graham were very close friends, uh, John Stott was invited to participate in that Congress. Uh, theologically, he helped to prepare the statement in advance, and he basically edited and masterminded what became known as the uh, Lausanne Covenant, 1974. At that time, uh, I, was still, um, a, I was still working on my PhD. And of course, we all knew John Stott. I mean, you know, as a, in, in my mid-20s, by then, John Stott was a famous evangelical leader in the UK and indeed globally. Uh, I'd, I'd listened to him teach. I'd heard him preach at, in London and uh, in the university and so on. But I, I, I met him for the first time in person in 1978, which was a few years after the Lausanne Covenant. Uh, and then I sort of followed the process through the 1980s, just out of interest, because in those years I was either in ordained ministry or in India. The process by which the Lausanne movement, which had grown out of the Congress, was seeking to work out theologically how to hold together uh, evangelism, the preaching of the word, the gospel, and social engagement, social involvement in all the issues of poverty and oppression and injustice, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. John Stott had managed to pull them together in Lausanne 74 and into the statement, partly by bringing to that Congress and giving them a very strong voice uh, some amazing church leaders from Latin America who he knew personally as very close friends, people like Samuel Escobar, Rene Padilla, and a number of others. Uh, and so that, that remained an issue through those years, through that decade or more after Lausanne was, how, you know, how do we hold these things together? A lot of theological work was done. A lot of good statements were written. Sadly, to this day, many people still keep asking the same question, to my great frustration. Um, you know, what do you think is most important? What should we do? You know, what, what is the priority? What is primacy? And so on. When I think a lot of the good theology that was done in the Lausanne movement sought to hold these things together. My own personal involvement, um, well, I went... I was invited to go to the um, second Lausanne Congress, which was in Manila in 1989. Um, after that, uh, in the 1990s, the Lausanne movement somewhat floundered a bit um, because that was the last decade of the 20th century. And uh, a movement had arisen uh, called uh, AD 2000 and beyond. And a lot of churches had this, what they call a decade of evangelism, the focus of evangelical churches through those years tended to be on reaching the unreached, evangelism, church growth, uh, uh, you know, reaching the world in our generation, that kind of thinking, which is all very important. I don't want in any way to dismiss it or disparage it, because clearly we do need to be taking the gospel to places where it hasn't yet been taken. But it, it, I, my, I then went to a a Lausanne Congress in 2004, not a Congress, it was a forum in 2004, uh, because I was asked to go and I went. And it's it's kind of funny. Um, I, I got quite disillusioned throughout that conference during the course of it, because A, there was very little biblical or theological input, which I thought was lacking, and I didn't think John Stott would be very pleased. Uh, and B, um, the... the there were 31 different special interest groups of which one was holistic mission. And I'm saying to myself, Anthony, look, holistic mission is not one interest group among others. Holistic mission is what it says it is. It's the whole thing. You know, evangelism without engagement isn't holistic, but engagement with development issues and poverty and medical work and relief work develop without any kind of gospel-centered evangelistic intention, that's not holistic either. So I, I was getting quite frustrated with the, the direction. And then uh, Doug Birdsell, who had uh, invited me to come and who at that point had just taken over the leadership as the sort of executive chair of, of the Lausanne movement, 
asked me to come for tea. It's the last day or two of the Congress. Could could we have tea together? So I went thinking he's probably going to tell me off because I've been missing quite a lot of the sessions because I just got frustrated. I went back to my hotel room and got on with some work. And uh, and so we sat down for tea and he said that he and his whole committee wanted me to take on the role of chairing the theological working group of Lausanne, the theological theological working group. And I, I was so taken aback that I, I actually excused myself from the table and said, just a moment, I, I need to go to the, the restroom, to the back, to the uh, washroom. Because I was saying when I got there, I said, Lord, what, you know, what, what you say, here am I thinking Lausanne hasn't got any theology anymore, you know, and here I'm now being asked to take on the theology working group. <laughs> it, it's almost, you know, be careful what you ask for sort of thing. <laughs> and, um, and so I went back and I, I, I laid down a number of sort of conditions that this is a bit of a surprise. And I, Doug knew my theology. He knew the kind of thing I was writing. And I said, I would want to do this in a way which tried to get back to something of the John Stott DNA of Lausanne. I would also want to bring into this group, um, if we're going to meet regularly and have consultants, I would want to bring in people from the majority world, from Africa, Asia, Latin America, people that I know are engaged in really, you know, holistic, integrated, evangelical, gospel-centered mission uh, to, to let them do the theology and then see what comes. So it took, and then I said, I'll also have to ask my my employers because I was working for the Langham Partnership, well, I still am, um, and so I needed to get their permission to take this on because I knew it would take a bit of time. And I said, I also need to ask John Stott. <laughs> So I did. I went back and I did all of those things. And it took me a, a good year or more to eventually sort of say yes and agree and take this on. And then from then through 2007, 8, 9, 10, uh, we held uh, consultations on the Lausanne Statements, the, the whole gospel, the whole church taking the whole gospel to the whole world. What does that mean? Um, and then I was asked to help to prepare the statement for the third Lausanne Congress, which was in Cape Town in 2010, um, which I went to as the chair of the statement working group and then ended up, ended up producing the Cape Town commitment, that document, the Cape Town commitment. So, yeah, that's that's been my involvement. So after that, um, after the 2010 Congress and, and so on, around about 2013, I stepped down, I stepped off the board of directors. Uh, well, I actually rotated off because my time had come up. Um, and so for the last, well, 10 years, really, uh, I've not been directly involved with Lausanne in any kind of major way. I mean, I keep in touch, but I'm not really involved at the moment.